conversation and the good news we have to share about our recommended candidate, Kristen Dibdahl, and allow this to be a fruitful conversation to engage our broader community in the joy that we have felt in selecting her through this process. In your name we pray, amen. So um, we can go ahead and flip to the next slide. So just a really brief agenda, what you will hear from us today. Um, we do want to provide you with just a regrounding on the call process that we have embarked on as a team over the last several months um, and share a few highlights from that process with you. At that point, then, we'll move into telling you a little bit more about Kristen Dibdahl, um, who she is, what we saw in her through the interview processes, as well as through our other interactions, and why she is our recommended candidate for the associate pastor position here at Mount Olivet. We'll talk a little bit about next steps in terms of some of those key dates and opportunities um, you all will have to meet Kristen and learn more about her. So we'll step you through those again um, in line with what Pastor Beth shared at the end of the last service, and then we will open it up for questions. So with that, I will hand it off to Nick to provide just an overview of the process that we have been engaged in over the last several months. Thanks, Lindsay. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for, for being here today. So just to kind of give a, an overview of, of these last four months and some of the key steps in the process. Um, back in September, this, this group here was, was commissioned as the call committee for this process. We submitted our ministry site profile, the MSP, to the Synod back in September. Uh, many of you also recall we had Bishop Ann here as, as part of that early stage in the process as well. Then in October, we received the slate of candidates from the Synod. We made our, our initial introductions and, and reached out to those candidates. Our group prepared for the interview process um, at that time as well. Shifting into November then is when the actual interviews with those candidates uh, began. There was a, a total of four candidates that we did interview in person in that process. Um, our, our group discerned you know, after that first round of interviews and then went into a second round of interview process. We had three candidates come back for that second round uh, process. And then moving into December, uh, after the second round and after further discernment is when we, we made uh, the recommendation and selection of Kristen Dibdahl from our group. Um, that recommendation went on to council and there was a process in between where the executive staff at Mount Olivet also had a chance to meet with Kristen uh, before that went to council. Council then met uh, Kristen and, and unanimously, unanimously uh, approved uh, the recommendation to move forward in calling her. Okay, me next. I'm I probably, you can hear me through the mask, but I'm gonna take it off. Uh, okay, so um, the next slide. Um, so there's a, with, with Kristen, you know, I'm not gonna read you these words on the slide, but I think my role here is to, is to share a little bit about the person. Um, and where we, where I'm gonna say where she shimmered for us um, and just kept shimmering and kept shimmering, right? So one of the things that struck me immediately with Kristen was her, um, her giftedness in her chaplaincy, her care, her community, and how she, when she talked about how she finds the energy around her, the things in, in, in things and people, and that's where she loves to, that's where she's drawn. And she felt so much energy and such special energy in this community and with us and everything she knew about us was like, I mean, she, I, put, I checked a box right away with her because that really resonated. That's how we think about things, that what shimmered for you, right? And she was looking for the shimmer right out of the gate. And that's how she came to us. And so I just wanted to give you that little perspective she did check the boxes in all of the leadership areas we're looking for as a community. Um, preaching, worship, leadership, she's a new pastor, um, so she'll grow and grow in that. Um, but she, she felt especially where she thought she would go heavily into chaplaincy, she learned through her own experiences that she was really, really feeling called to ministry, to worship, to pastoral care. And that's, um, that was really, something that kind of she's talked about learning about herself and that was um, 
what, what that means for us is she has both of those things, right? And we, we really feel like we need um, care. You know, we really need the community to be cared for and to come, kind of come back to this, to what we're going to be as a community um, after, after we can all be together more regularly again. Um, she's got the teaching background. Uh, it, you'll learn more about her as she talks about these things. Um, she's got a very strong social ministry agenda, which I'll talk about a little bit on the next page, or on the next slide, and then uh, she's a builder. Um, she is known in her past internship experiences um, to take um, sort of ambiguity, I'll say, and putting structure to it to move it forward and to build something from it. And she talked a lot about that, and that was something that really resonated with us. And then her um, innovative problem solving kind of came through in that same conversation. So at the next slide. So her background, so Kristen um, truly is called to ministry. She's truly called because she's coming to us from another career, and another professional life. And this is something that really um, stood out to us. Um, she has a very strong resume of professional experience. Um, and she, in her professional experience and the education she sought out were those um, social ministry, building solutions, building frameworks to be able to advance social ministry for communities. Care for people, basically, is what came through with Kristen. Um, she has her, you know, she's got a financial economics base, which is really good for us. She's got a um, master's in public administration from Princeton University. Um, as we think about open tables, open hands, open hearts, open grounds, we don't, we've got, we, we did a really good job with open table, <laughs> right? <laughs> What's next for us? We talked a lot about that. Think about what we need right now, but think about what we're gonna need next. And she comes to us with, with so much background in understanding how the public systems work. Um, she worked for government. She was an, a state budget director for the state of Minnesota. She also has a U of M School of Public Health. Um, and she's also been in, um, in the professional space, not just the government space. And so she knows about things like where to get grants. She knows about things like how to get funding through, through um, social programs. Um, so these are things that just really seemed like truly, with great sincerity, I'll say, she, would, she came to us because she was supposed to come to us. And that's how we feel about her. So last thing, um, you know, that, that palliative care chaplain, that chaplaincy, that heart she has, really came through every single conversation. So I get the beautiful opportunity to tell you my impressions of her. Thank you for letting me do that. But I just wanted to share with you, these are the things that really came to us and really kind of landed. We had other excellent candidates to consider. But there was just, there, this is where we landed because this was the true sense of call. That's what I'll say. The other thing I would just add is um, we were looking for a really strong partner to Beth as well as a strong team member for the staff here at Mount Olivet. And one of the things that Kristen talked with us about was her desire to be a part of a team again. It's something she misses from her professional experience and something she was seeking um, in her call. The other thing is, while she's new to leadership, she is an experienced leader. Um, she is um, a person who can hit the ground running, even though she's new to leading in ministry, she is not new to leading people and process. And as we thought about a strong partner to Beth, and as we thought about where we are as a community and where we hope to go, having another really strong leader as a part of our staff team was really important to us. And that was another quality that we saw in Kristen and we're really excited about. All right. So my role is talking about next steps. So we can go to the next slide. Um, and really, I'm just gonna reiterate what Beth had said earlier. Um, next Sunday, we're doing a meet and greet with Kristen at both services. So she and her family will be attending both services. And between services, you'll have a chance to see and talk with her. 
Um, and she's also doing the same thing on Wednesday evening. So um, anybody who's here at church will have a chance to meet her. Uh, if you're unable to attend, there is a link to how you can, um, uh, you know, how you can read a, a bio of her. So, you know, that's there. And then the congregational vote will happen on Sunday, January 23rd, after the second service. So it will happen at 1215. Again, the details of what are needed for that vote are being sent out to you. So um, you'll have that. And um, there'll be both in-person and virtual options. So it, we're trying to figure all this out in a COVID world, a COVID safe world. And um, as Beth said, the exciting news is that she would be able to start right away. So um, assuming that the congregational vote goes as planned, she would start the next day and be part of staff. A couple details not on the slide that Beth mentioned at the end of the last service. So an email is going out this afternoon with a lot more details about the meet and greets as well as the congregational vote, so look for that. And then a, a hard copy letter will also be mailed to everybody tomorrow with those same details. So again, lots of opportunities to ground yourself in those details and choose, choose your adventure for how you want to participate in the meet and greet with Kristen as well as um, the congregational vote. We've mentioned Kristen's family several times, so just a little bit more about that. Um, Kristen is married, her husband is Dave, um, and she does have two children, Jacob, who is 10 years old, and Anya, who is eight years old. So in addition to um, having a great new staff member and leader in our community, we'd be welcoming um, her entire family um, to be engaged in a part of our community as well. And they will be joining her for the meet and greets as well. So you would get a chance to meet her whole family, um, not just Kristen. All right, so we have a little over 10 minutes before we need to uh, close this down and prepare for the 1045. What questions do you have? Yes. What professional experiences is she still involved in? Um, so she is in full-time ministry now. So she, through her um, ma or Masters of Divinity through Luther, she, has, she is no longer employed by any of those previous employers, and she is looking for a full-time call in leadership of or ministry leadership. And I would invite you, if you get a chance to attend one of the meet and greets, I would invite you to ask her that story of that call um, from a pretty established um, career into ministry. It's a beautiful story. Um, a very intentional transition on her part, and um, she did leave her professional experience um, several years ago and has been embarked on this journey of discerning what was next for her, and part of that discernment was ministry, um, leading her into Luther Seminary, and this past summer she has been interning um, with the church. Um, actually, I think it's been for about the last year, in addition to the chaplaincy work that she was doing at Methodist. So really has been engaged in ministry work um, and learning over the last several years. Now off, okay. Um, you thought I was done talking, shut it off. <laughs> um, no, I just, to reference, uh, do ask her about that, um, that moment or that time that she, that she realized that she was actually called to, to this. Um, it was, she was, she's, she'll just, I mean, she'll tell you, but she was literally at work in a meeting trying to do something that didn't, that conflicted with what she thought she needed to do with her life and in, in a very significant leadership role. Um, like taking apart a program she thought should stay in place because of financial reasons. And it was a, it was a great story and her call showed through that. And then she spent the time trying to figure out what to do what to do with that, and ended up right there with us. Other questions about Kristen or the events of the next couple of weeks? 
Yes. Thank you, Kathy. It's we were reflecting up here right before the MOTOC that, you know, arriving at a decision by committee is not always easy. Um, and certainly there was some good conversation, great questions, um, things that we challenged each other on, but I have to say this one felt pretty easy um, as we got to know the candidates. And again, we had some really, really strong candidates, but there were just some really clear um, indications to us through all of our interactions with Kristen that she is called and we are called to her. So um, the Holy Spirit was working through this. So. Uh, but it's been an amazing committee to be a part of as well. And just recognition to this group, it's been a big time commitment, um, both in meetings as well as you know study and discernment outside of meetings. And um, we've all brought different gifts to this experience. And again, with so huge leadership and support from Pastor Beth, and then obviously support from the Synod as well. Um, it's been an amazing experience. You know, not that you don't wanna end right now, but if we do have another minute, you know, th this sounds so clear, and it was really clear as we kind of kept coming back and back and back to this is where we feel the spirit and where our discernment is leading us. But it wasn't that it wasn't easy because we've got we've got some really big agendas, as we all know in the world. We've got a a, a COVID pandemic agenda. We got to deal with this. We got I'll say not agendas, contexts, right? Contexts we're dealing with. We've got um, we got to get back, we got it not back to normal, but back to what we're going to be, right? We got to get to where we're going to be. Um, so that was really hard. You know, how does this, how does this leader help Beth help us to do that? How do we, how do we, how do we respond to the demographics of this community? How do we support the demographics, the youth, the, the, the families, the young families, the older families and the, and the older ages? How do we, um, how do we deal with some of the, the racial e e equity issues? And it's a, r a really big topic for our community and our congregation. How do we, all of that, and we acknowledge that some of these things, no leader is gonna just check a box on, but the acknowledgement across the board was that we'll journey together and we're bringing in the, the skills and the gifts and the traits and the competencies that will help us journey together. And I just don't wanna make everyone leave the room thinking this was just so easy and a, and a super, and she's gonna come with answers on everything, right? That's not it at all. But she's, we believe she's the right leader for our time and for our future. Thanks, Linda. Any other questions? Yes. <laughs> so the question was, she has such powerful credentials, how long before she's called as a lead pastor somewhere? I'm going to invite Pastor Beth to respond to that. I, I don't know exactly how that works. Um, I think one of the things I would say about Kristen is she is eager to learn. Um, and um, I, sh I would say she even admits herself has still much to learn about leading in ministry. Um, and I know one of the things we talked about as a call committee with Pastor Beth is that, you know, Beth has things to teach her and share with her as an experienced leader in ministry. And Kristen has things to teach us about from her experiences as a professional. So I, I, I see a long partnership of learning here, her learning from us and from staff and us learning from her. But... I don't know the exact process in terms of when she would potentially be called into something else. There you go. Um, not reading too much into your question, Barb, but I think part of it is we grieve, right? <laughs> um, when we love pastors and they leave. And um, I think... I think first call pastors are required to stay at least three years because it takes that long for a community to know a leader and a leader to know the community. I think um, there has been 
a, a history of longer tenure sometimes. I was an associate pastor for nine years, which is not typical. Um, but one of the joys is being able to be in a community where we equip leaders for the next thing for a bigger world and a bigger church. And as sad it was to see Pastor Joel go, we were also a part of forming him to who he is now and who he will continue to be. And I think being a part of that natural um, cycle of calling and being called away. So I can't speak for Kristen, um, but I know um, she will be here for a while. And as much as she's a pastor, she's also a mom. And um, all, all the balancing of um, those, both of those vocations. But for however long she's here, um, I trust in how that will be good. And I also trust, um, and I really celebrate. We're a pretty cool church um, to be a part of. And, and how do we get to be that um, shaping that experiences of leaders um, now when I'm going? Anything else on your minds and hearts before we close the meeting? Questions that are coming online. Good question. Yes, if you have any questions and you're joining us online, please feel free to type those in. Beth is taking a look for us. Nothing? Okay. Oh, great. Well, I'll have you flip to the last slide. This committee remains open to conversations and questions, so certainly if something strikes you um, after today or over the course of the next couple of weeks and lead up to the congregational vote on January 23rd, please reach out to any one of us um, or to Pastor Beth. We are happy to um, engage you in further conversation about Kristen, the process, whatever may be on your mind. And just thank you for your support um, of this team through the process and your trust in us to um, lead this process for our community and to make this recommendation. We truly are excited about Kristen. We look forward to you getting the opportunity to uh, meet her as well. So thank you for this time. Thanks for being here today.